I'm covering the tragic yet heroic tale of Nirja Banot, a flight attendant who sacrificed her own life to save hundreds of passengers from a hijacking. Some people are so brave and selfless that they continue to inspire even after they're no longer with us. One of these courageous exceptions is Nirja Banot, a 22-year-old Indian model and flight attendant that saved over 350 passengers from a hijacked Pan Am flight in the late 1980s. Nirja Banot was born in Shandigarh, India on September 7th, 1963. She was brought up in a Punjabi Hindu family. Around the age of 16, Nirja was discovered by a Mumbai-based magazine. She was beautiful and they wanted to work with her as a model. Soon after, she started up a successful modeling career. She was on magazine covers, print ads, and tons of TV advertisements. She was truly making a name for herself in the modeling world because of this je ne sais quoi and people loved her for it. In 1985, Nirja ended up getting married through an arranged marriage. She left her family home for the very first time and moved in with her new husband. But the marriage got really bad fast, and it wasn't long before Nirja made the decision to get the hell out of this toxic relationship. Nirja's husband was incredibly abusive in every sense of the word. He would keep money from her, so she was totally stuck financially. She couldn't keep living in that house. She left two months later and moved back in with her parents in Mumbai. Later that same year, Nirja applied for a job as a flight attendant. Back in the day, flight attendants were seen as these goddesses. The job was highly desirable, and the selection process was very particular. This was especially true if you flew with Pan Am. Pan American World Airways was the number one airline in the United States for most of the 20th century. Well, in 1985, Pan Am decided they wanted an entirely Indian cabin crew for routes that went between Germany and India. The company started what was the equivalent of a talent search to find the best of the best to join their crew. These job interviews were a big deal. Over 10,000 people applied for the job, but they were narrowed down to 80. And the lovely Nirja Banot was one of the 80 chosen for the position and was flown out to Florida to start training. Nirja wasn't just another employee clocking in and clocking out. She genuinely cared about her role and always went above and beyond. After about a year of this incredible work ethic, the company didn't want her efforts to go unnoticed. So they promoted her to purser, which is essentially just like a head flight attendant on board. She was genuinely pounding the pavement and making money moves all before the age of 23. But on September 5th, 1986, just two days before her 23rd birthday, Nirja Banot would board Pan Am Flight 73, traveling from Mumbai to the United States. On their way, they made a stop in Pakistan at the Karachi Airport, which was one of two scheduled stops. On this flight, there were 394 passengers, nine infants, three crew members, and 13 flight attendants. Around 109 people got off the plane in Karachi. Then, a busload full of more passengers boarded to reach their next stop in Frankfurt, Germany. Within minutes of the new passengers boarding, four armed men hijacked the aircraft, intending to take control of the plane and redirect it to Cyprus to free Palestinian prisoners. Two of these men were dressed up in Pakistani airport security uniforms and drove up in a van they dressed up to look like a security vehicle. By that point, the vehicle had already gone through multiple checkpoints and was cleared each time. They were driving on the tarmac up to the plane with lights flashing and sirens blaring. They ran up to the ramp and fired the weapons into the air to scare off anyone on the ground. The other two men joined them, one carrying a briefcase filled with grenades and the other with the belt of explosives wrapped around him. As these guys were firing off rounds into the air, two staff members were caught up in the crossfire and ended up passing away. After taking two lives, the group rushed onto the plane. The hijackers were part of the Abu Nidal organization group, which is no longer around anymore. It was a nationalist group that specifically targeted Americans and American assets. The hijackers had been through months of training before the attack. They were there to use US citizens' lives as bargaining chips to get the plane to Cyprus. Nirja saw the men boarding the plane. Luckily, she was in a position to radio the cockpit, telling these pilots to get the hell out of there, using the code she was trained to use for hijacking. The pilot, co-pilot, and engineer escaped through an overhead hatch and ran out onto the tarmac to find safety. They were able to escape unharmed. Once they were gone, the next in charge was Nirja. Her job was to take control of the situation and help the best that she could now that the flight crew was gone. The cabin crew closed the doors to ensure no one else could come on and nobody could leave. Even though she could have escaped early on, she stayed back to warn the rest of her crew and to help. The first problem for the hijackers was they no longer had a pilot to fly the plane as they had escaped early on. In their many months of training, not once were they taught how to fly a plane. In fact, these guys didn't even know how to work the cockpit radio. Because of this, they had to open one of the doors to the plane and shout down to the officials as this was the only way they could communicate with one another. The hijackers then ordered everyone to get into the middle of the plane together. 
So first class went towards the back and the people in the back came to the center. Passengers were squeezed right next to each other in aisles. And emotions were obviously running really high because this is the worst possible scenario, right? And when everyone is packed in so tightly, everything becomes much more intense and chaotic. Early on, one of the hijackers walked through the aisles of the plane and picked out 29-year-old Rajesh Kumar. They brought him to the front of the plane next to the open door where they were communicating with the officials. He made Rajesh kneel on the ground with his hands behind his head. They told the ground officials that if there wasn't a pilot on the aircraft in the next 30 minutes, he would end Rajesh's life. But he got impatient and decided that instead of waiting, he would use his firearm on Rajesh in front of the officials and passengers. He then pushed his body from the plane onto the tarmac. Rajesh lived in California and had recently become a US citizen. When officials grabbed Rajesh to put him in the ambulance, he was still breathing, but sadly, he passed away en route to the hospital. At this point, the plane doors closed. Next, the hijackers demanded passengers close their windows. They didn't want anyone looking out and they definitely didn't want anyone looking in. After this, the hijackers demanded the flight attendant collect all passports on the plane. They were specifically targeting US citizens, which the flight attendants, specifically Nirja, immediately picked up on. They went through the whole plane collecting passports and successfully hiding all American passports along the way. They either hid them in the seats or threw them down the garbage chutes. The hijackers went through all of the collected passports. Still, they couldn't find any Americans aboard. But in reality, there were more than 40 Americans on Flight 73. Then, Nirja was asked to call over the intercom for passenger Michael John Thexton, a British citizen, to come to the front of the plane. I can't even imagine the fear that would run through me if I heard my name called over that intercom. He came to the front of the plane where the hijackers asked if he was a soldier and carrying a firearm with him, to which he replied no. He then was ordered on his knees and to put his hands behind his head. After that, the hijackers opened the door and said if they didn't get a pilot, they would do to Michael as they did to Rajesh. Officials knew to take these threats seriously because they had no problem doing it again if they'd already done it once before. One hijacker told Michael that he didn't actually like all the conflict. Still, Americans and Israelis had taken over his country and he could no longer live his normal life. Eventually, he let Michael go back to his seat. While all this is going on, there was a lot of waiting time, so Nirja and her flight attendants continued to serve snacks and beverages to the passengers on board. Nirja was able to sneak a manual when the hijackers weren't looking. Inside, she found the page containing directions to the doors and inflating their slides. She ripped it out and hid it in a magazine. She brought it to the passenger sitting closest to the exit door, telling him to reference it because it might be helpful information. She was so quick on her feet. She saw this small window of an opportunity and took it. Officials told the hijackers that a man on the plane could operate the cockpit radio. He worked for Pan Am, but was traveling as a passenger on this particular flight. They didn't want to keep yelling back and forth from the door to the cockpit, instead use the radio to negotiate. Keep in mind, at this point, this has all been going on for hours. In the entire time, the bad guys were screaming out of the plane all of their demands. They really just got like bottom of the barrel training on this whole thing. Day became night, and as it got darker outside, the cabin got dimmer. The power went out entirely, and the emergency lights came on, but these didn't last very long either, and eventually they dimmed down to practically nothing. The ground officials had literally no intention of giving these men a pilot, but the hijackers weren't aware of this. At what point do you think that they realized, oh, we're actually idiots? There's no way these people are bringing a pilot to fly this freaking plane. But after hours and hours of nothing, they refused to sit around and wait any longer. One of the hijackers said a prayer and fired his weapon at another accomplice. This man had an explosive belt tied around his waist. Had this been successful, the explosion would have taken the lives of everyone on the plane, hijackers included. But there was essentially no light in the cabin and no one, including the hijackers, could see their limbs in the dark. And when he went to shoot the other man, he missed a good portion of the explosive belt and it only set off a very small detonation. As I'm sure you can imagine, this scared the passengers. As everyone was screaming, the rest of the hijackers started shooting into the cabin. The bullets were ricocheting off the plane's insides, which is what caused most of the damages and injuries. They pulled out the briefcases full of grenades and started throwing them wherever they could. But again, these guys had basically the worst training of all time and didn't even pull the pins out of them entirely. It only allowed for very tiny explosions. Most of the damage was done from the firearms. During all this commotion, Nirja was able to open one of the plane's exit doors. 
However, the lever wasn't in the correct position and the slide did not inflate when the door opened. Two more exit doors were opened, but again, the slides didn't inflate. But in a situation as terrifying as this, people don't care if they gotta jump 15 feet out of the plane. If that means they live, so be it. A broken leg will heal, but you only live once. Thankfully, a fourth door was opened and the slide finally inflated. This was the passenger who read the magazine with the secret manual page inside. Because of this, the slide inflated and more passengers escaped quickly and without sustaining any injuries. While the hijackers are firing into the cabin, Nirdra stayed at the door to help passengers exit the aircraft. It really just shows how selfless she was. Even at 22 years old, she could have jumped out at any time, but she chose to stay behind and protect her passengers. Sadly, one of the men caught Nirja as she was helping a few American children escape the aircraft. He grabbed her by the hair and fired his weapon at point blank range, ending the life of Nirja Banot just one day before her 23rd birthday. After 17 hours, Pakistan sent a special forces group to the scene. After the hijackers ran out of ammunition, the soldiers ran onto the plane, capturing the men. On July 6, 1988, the four hijackers were sentenced to the ultimate punishment which was later changed to life in prison. Out of over 350 people on Flight 73, there were only 20 casualties and over 100 non-fatal injuries. Nirja helped save so many people on Flight 73 that day. Not only did Nirja help save lives, but thanks to her quick thinking, she also kept the plane on the ground, which is a major accomplishment. Nirja Bernot was awarded the Ashoka Chakra Award after passing. This is the highest award for bravery in the face of the enemy during peacetime that one can receive in India. She was also the youngest female to ever receive this award. Across the country, Nirja Banot would be known as the heroine of the hijack. She risked her life to protect and serve others. That is what a genuine public servant does. And she was, indeed, one in a million. To end this story with a little bit more positivity, one of the seven-year-old kids on the plane that day grew up to become an airline pilot. He credits Nirja for saving his life and inspiring him to join the field. I feel like we never hear about these kinds of stories in the United States, at least not super often. It's important to recognize heroes from all across the world and appreciate the spirit and legacy that they leave behind. And that, my friends, is the story of Nirja Banot, the heroine of the hijack. What did you think of this story? Is this one that you've heard about before? Thanks for watching Killer Bites. My name's Danny. We'll see you next time.